Hi friends, let's build an AI agent to assist data scientist. But before that, let's be very clear that there is more to a data scientist job than simply doing some coding and training machine learning models. For example, I spend a significant amount of time working with the stakeholders, understanding their problems and developing solutions which are practical and which will work within several constraints the business might have. For example, the data which is available during the model training might not be available at the time of inference. Okay, so when you develop the solution, we have to keep all the business constraints in mind. It's not as if we simply start with a data file and uh, develop a model. Okay, so the purpose of this agent is to assist the data scientist in accelerating the development process, but it cannot replace a data scientist. All right, let's start with that. Okay, so we are going to use Hugging Face Transformers library. A uh, couple of months back, they have uh, introduced uh, agents. All right, so let's import Hugging Face engine for accessing the LLM and then uh, the agent. Uh, we are going to use this reason and act code agent. In Transformers, there are broadly two types of agent. Uh, the first one is the React code agent and the second one is more general purpose uh, React JSON agent. All right, now to power an LLM, uh, to power an agent, we need an LLM. Uh, we might be using OpenAI or maybe open source LLMs running on Hugging Face, etc. So if we want to use these open source LLMs running on Hugging Face, obviously we need an API token and an account. Uh, so log in here. So using this Hugging Face engine, we can access an LLM. Now, for some simple text generation type tasks, uh, we might use less powerful LLMs. But because agents are supposed to be more powerful, they are supposed to be carrying out some thinking and executing the tasks independently. We generally use um, much more powerful uh, LLMs for the agents. All right. So let's initialize our agent. Now at, at the core, the agent requires two things. One is an LLM to power its thinking. And then the second one is the tools to carry out a different tasks. Now the inbuilt react engine it already comes with the code interpreter as the tools which can write the code as well as execute the code right so for this particular agent we don't need to provide any additional tools but in any framework like crew ai autogen uh, or you take any other framework we need to develop the tools first and then we develop an agent uh, and provide access to those tools to the agent okay uh, all right that work has done for us uh, by hugging face a development team now, this one is also very important, uh, additional authorized imports. Now, depending on the task we want the agent to carry out, we might need to provide additional libraries in addition to the uh, basic Python. So since this agent is going to be doing some data analysis and plotting, we provide NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib, Seaborn, etc. Now, this is very, very important. As I mentioned, this agent is autonomous, right? So if it don't get right first time, it can rewrite the code and re-execute the code until it gets correct, right? Now, we don't want that to go uh, in an infinite loop. So it's better we keep uh, some checks and balances uh, uh, with the agent, okay? So the maximum iterations. So after 10 iterations, even if uh, the agent could not complete the task, it will stop it there. Uh, otherwise, uh, we get a huge bill uh, running those LLMs, all right? Now, I'm not going to use the LLM from Hugging Face, I will be using at the open source, uh, sorry, open AI LLM. But before that, here is the prompt uh, for the React code agent. As you can imagine, uh, so here we are saying, hey, I will be giving you a task. You are a code, you have access to code interpreter. You can write the code, you can perform the task, so on and so forth. And we also give uh, some examples. So for example, okay, here we have a task and how it should think. And then uh, you don't have access to all these tools, but if you have access to a tool, this is how you access the tool, okay? And here is another example, exactly the same format, task, how it's supposed to think, and then how it's supposed to use the tools, okay? We provide a number of examples here. Now, similar to this Hugging Face engine, which is inbuilt, we can create these LLM engines if we want to use other commercial or open source LLMs like uh, OpenAI, Cloud, etc. So, with this function, we are creating OpenAI engine. At the core, it is simply this chart completion create uh, API. We are just invoking this API, but we are also satisfying a couple of other, uh, these hugging face uh, requirements, okay? So we don't really need to touch anything in this code. If you want, you can change the default model. 
um, and maybe the temperature. Okay, leave that as it is. All right. So we will be using GPT-40 mini model. And exactly as before, we have the React code agent. The only thing we changed is uh, we switched the LLM from Hugging Face uh, to OpenAI. All right. So we are creating a directory uh, because that's where we want to write the uh, write our output files to. All right. So just for the demo purpose, we will be using uh, the Titanic dataset, uh, which uh, probably everybody who worked in data science uh, knew it. All right. So since when we work with our own private data, the model uh, might not have uh, might not be aware of uh, what this data is, right? Uh, the context, etc. So in such a case, we can provide some variable nodes. Probably we can leave this for the Titanic because when the model is trained, uh, it must have seen this data. But uh, let's imagine that this uh, Titanic data is private and the model has not seen before. Okay, so here we can provide uh, some notes about the variables. Uh, here we have the the class which take these three variables, what they mean, uh, the age, uh, the sibling, spouse, so and so forth. Okay, all right, and then uh, so here we are running the agent and we are giving some custom uh, additional instructions what we expect the agent to do right we might want the agent to do some particular correlation analysis or we might want it only to do some plotting etc etc right so here we are saying okay please load the source file uh, and analyze its content and we are saying uh, find out three interesting or uh, begin with asking three interesting questions and then uh, answer them using the relevant data sources okay and we also said, uh, we also ask it to do some uh, plotting as well. Okay. All right. So this is how it looks like. Um, all right. So it's just the prompt. And then it start with reading the data file. All right. Uh, let's see what it did. So it seems uh, it did some plotting and save the plots uh, to the figures uh, folder. Uh, we asked it to save. And then it did some analysis, I mean, what percentage of uh, passengers survive based on their class, based on their age, and did some more plotting, so and so forth, uh, etc. And if you look at the results, the analysis results, uh, these are the three insights it provided. Remember, we asked it to start with three questions and then answer them. So in all these questions, the survival rate is, uh, is uh, the important one, right? So it tried to figure out how does passenger class affect the survival rate, the age, and also the gender has in any influence on the survival rate. Now, I'm not going to go into all these insights, uh, but you can go over. I uh, went through them and they are, uh, they are all spot on. Very nice, uh, insightful analysis. All right. Now, the same had we used the LAMA 70 billion model. These results are with uh, GPT-40. These results are with uh, 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 LAMA model. All right. Now, that's looking good. And if you want to look at uh, the images, these are the images. And again, uh, uh, so in all these images, the survival rate uh, uh, is the focus. And how's, how does age distribution affect the survival rate? Uh, for example, let's look at only one plot. So as the age increases, the survival rate, uh, it reduces. I mean, had it taken a broader bin, we probably would have seen uh, a bit more a clearer trend. But even here, you can see with the age increasing, the survival rate uh, reduces. All right. Okay, now let's ask our agent uh, to build a model. Let's see if it can do that. Now, exactly same as before, uh, but this time we are providing an additional library, sklearn, all right? And this time the instructions are, you are an expert, a machine learning engineer, and you have access to this Titanic train.csv file uh, to predict the survival uh, for rows in this uh, data frame, all right? And create an output file uh, with your predictions, all right? Now, take care to import the functions before uh, using them, that's all standard. Now, this additional notes and analysis, this is from the previous uh, uh, agent, right? So here we have these additional notes, and then uh, these analysis is found by the previous data analyst agent, let's call it. All right, we provide all those additional notes. Now, let's see what this agent has done. All right, uh, very standard, it read the data, uh, which is good. And then uh, here, it handling the missing values. Uh, so for the numerical one, it imputed with the mean, uh, for example, the age, and then encoded the categor categorical variables, for example, sex, and then filled uh, the missing values in this embarked, and uh, 
uh, bit of data processing and then it removed unnecessary columns for example the name it's not going to correlate with a passenger survived or not right and then this just the ticket number the passenger id uh, so it dropped a few columns and train test split uh, i guess very standard uh, machine learning building a process right so it choose a model fit the model on training data then make the predictions on test data and oh since it does not have the test data separately oh sorry validation data so it used the validation data to uh, make the predictions and then computed uh, the accuracy all right uh, what is it doing it isn't executing the code below okay so that's the code uh, the model has been trained and then okay when it ran the code it has an issue with one of the categorical variables uh, i try to fix that one and eventually uh, it built the model and the validation accuracy is about uh, 81% okay now it did not write uh, the output file as we asked here uh, i'll show you okay so it did not create this output file with the predictions uh, the reason is it was expecting a separate test.csv file similar to the titanic.csv file it is expecting uh, a validation slash a test file so maybe our instructions are not clear but as you can see the agent might not do exactly what we might ask or uh, we might not be able to provide all the instructions in written form right so we have to be careful there all right uh, this is very good 81 percent uh, uh, now as i mentioned the agent the purpose of the agent is to assist the data scientist now it might used some ideas we might not be aware so the data scientist may use uh, those ideas in the actual product project project or we can use this 81 percent as the base uh, model to compare how uh, much uh, we can improve right that's all for this video thank you very much